Um, well, let me start with a little story um, about uh, a, a man and a woman, and I'm going to take their names out to protect the not guilty, the innocent. Um, so I need, I need names to replace what their real names are. So give me a, a man's name, and I'll use it. Ralph. Ralph. <laughs> hey, Ralphie Boy, that's one of my favorite names. Well, I, we're going to have to use Alice then for the female, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we have Ralph and Alice. I like it. So anyway, several years ago, uh, Ralph and Alice came to me, and they were a young couple, and uh, not married, but dating. And it was not a healthy relationship. It was an abusive relationship. And uh, Ralph was physically and emotionally abusive to Alice. And I would minister to Alice as much as possible, and my guidance to Alice was, you need to turn around and run. You need to leave. They were unmarried, and I will always say to people who are in abusive situations, you need to get out of that situation. So I would always encourage Alice, Alice, just you don't, you need to get away from Ralph. It's not healthy. And she would go away from Ralph for a little bit, but you know how it's, it's hard to break soul ties. So Alice would just would come back to Ralph, and they would go through a season of abuse, and she would come to me, and I would say, Alice, you have to leave. My guidance to you remains the same. You need to leave Ralph, turn around, and don't look back. And she would do that a little bit, and then later on she would come back to Ralph. And that's the way it was. And then one time I was ministering to her and, and doing my best to, to speak life and light into the situation. And she kind of, at that point, because she would go through these, things, these phases where, yeah, I know I need to leave him. I know I need to get away. And yeah, I could do that. I'll, I'll, I'll leave Ralph. And she's done this before. She had done it before. And she said, but, you know, Ralph is, is, is under attack. Ralph needs our prayers. And, you know, Satan wants to claim Ralph. And, but God wants to claim Ralph, too. And I said, I know that. I know that. I know that. But it doesn't mean that you need to be the vessel to bring forth that light. You need to leave. And she said, well, I'll leave, but I'm just, I'm, I'll keep, I'm just going to keep praying for Ralph. I'm going to just keep praying for Ralph. And then I said something which I don't think I've ever guided anyone else in this way. I said, no, Alice, don't pray for Ralph. And she's like, why? I said, Alice, if you pray for Ralph, you are keeping your soul tie connected to him. You may not realize this, and it may seem like a holy thing. I'm going to pray for him. I'm going to pray for this man, Ralph. But in doing so, you're perpetuating the connection, which needs to be cut. And I don't know if anybody relates to that at all when you just need to stop even praying for a thing because the battle is not yours. And I don't even mean it in the battle is not yours, but God's. It is. But God does not want you as a soldier in this battle. Get off the field. It ain't yours. And that was my guidance to Alice. Don't even pray for him because if you're praying for him, you're keeping you know, you're a connection. You don't even realize you're doing it, but you're keeping that soul connection. And soul connections need to be cut. Let other people pray for Ralph. So today I want to talk about those battles that we all experience when God is saying, the battle is mine. You are not a soldier in this fight. You can back off. And I got this. Now, we hear a lot of messages from me and every other pastor about the battle we're in. The battle. And God is raising up an army. Like the, the song, the Upton song, Jason. Raise up an army. Raise up an army. And there's so many songs about God raising up an army. And it's all true. And we, be, we can become empowered by those messages about we're part of the army of God. And we are. And we are. So let's, let's frame the verse that I'm going to start with from this Torah portion. The Torah portion is called Shoftim. Let me just tell you what the situation is. The children of Israel are probably, oh, about two or three days away at most from coming under the 
oversight and the leadership of Joshua, they are about to take the land. We are probably two days away in their lives. We're two days away from Joshua chapter 1. We're still mid-book of Deuteronomy, but where they are, they're probably two days away from Joshua chapter 1. And the men are lined up like an army. And the priest gives them one of those epic pep talks that generals give to the people. Like Hollywood caliber pep talk. You know, like, this is the words. Like, can you imagine, like, this, a sea of, of an army? You know, the people of Israel are army, and maybe they're a little bit timid. You know, and the priest goes, Hear, O Israel! They probably did it with an English accent. <laughs> Hear, O Israel! Today you're drawing near for battle against your enemies. Let not your heart be faint. Do not fear or panic or be in dread of them, for the Lord your God is he who goes with you to fight for you against your enemies, to give you the victory. Hallelujah, we can claim that. It's one of those epic general speeches, you know, it reminds me of, you know, Gan not Gandalf, who's the, uh, Aragorn. Aragorn at the Black Gate. You know, on his horse, and everybody's scared. Men of Gondor! I see fear in your eyes. The day will come when the courage of men will fail. Today is not that day. Like Hollywood pep talk, you know, from the captain. But then, right after this verse, we see something that no human general or Aragorn would tell his army, never, never, or in the New England accent, never, never. And if you want to know how divine the Bible is, there are some things that God told the people that no human would ever tell them to do. There's only one answer for something like this. There is God. So he says, this is God talking. Is there any man who has built a new house and has not dedicated it? Let him go back to his house, lest he die in the battle and another man dedicate it. In other words, we just got the pep talk. Don't be afraid. The Lord is with you. He's going to fight for you. He's going to conquer your enemies. He's going to give you the victory. Uh, if anybody built a house, you can go home. You don't even need to fight. Just go home. If there's any man among you who has planted a vineyard and has not enjoyed its fruit, let him go back home. Let him go back to his house. Lest he die in the battle and another man enjoy its fruit. He continues, is there a man among you who is, has betrothed the wife and has not married her? Let him go back to his house, lest he die in the battle and another man marry her. And then he goes into a heart issue. Is there any man here who is fearful and faint-hearted? He, we just got the pep talk. Don't be afraid. If there's any man fearful or faint-hearted, let him go back to his house lest he make the heart of his fellows melt like his own. Can you imagine any general doing that? And can you imagine ever saying that to a human general? We're going to go to war. Be strong. Be courageous. We got this army. We got this. Uh, you know, I, I, I just planted a tomato plant. And I just, you know, I did it just in the springtime, you know. And the tomatoes are just coming out, you know, so I, I, good luck with all that, but uh, I, I gotta, I gotta go. Good luck storming the castle. You know, or like, yeah, you know, we gotta go take the land. You know, I, 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 you know, I, I'm just closing on a house. Can you imagine doing that? Can you imagine saying that to the Lord? The Lord encourage you. You got this. You got it. The battle is mine. Don't fear. The, uh, uh, you know, I just proposed to my girlfriend and, you know, 
I, I, you know, I'm, I gotta go back to her and say thanks, but no thanks for the battle. What the Lord is saying is that the battle is real. The struggle is real. Whether it's at a personal level, a state level, a national level, whatever the fight is, the spiritual fight is real. The fight may not be yours to fight. These verses give us the divine right to not fight. And it is okay to say, I know there's a battle going on. I know it's real. But I got to take care of myself. And God gives you permission to do that because he loves you that much. Because the battle is his. Do you know that God has a real precedent in forming an army and then lessening the amount of people in that army? Because I can give a bold message of be strong and God is forming an army. But today I give you the message that he is forming an army, but he's going to win with you or without you. He doesn't need you unless he's calling you. And you may think that these people who are fearful and faint-hearted who are saying, you know, I got a tomato plant in the garden I got to tend to. Thank you. Goodbye. You may think it's weakness. It's not weakness. It's wisdom. To know when the battle isn't yours. This is the message that I gave to Alice. It takes wisdom to know the battle may be real, but the battle is not yours. The battle may be real, but the battle is not yours. He has a precedent of forming an army and taking people out of the army. There's the story in the story of Gideon, where the Lord said to Gideon, the people who are with you are, are too many. It's too many for me to hand Midian over to them. Otherwise, Israel would become boastful, saying my own power has saved me. And we know the story. I believe it was 20,000 or something men, and it had to be reduced and reduced and reduced to, down to 300. And God's like, okay, I could take a nation with 300. That works for me. That works for me. But that's, that's God just reducing his army. God wants us to have wisdom to know when to fight, what battles he wants us in, and what battles are not ours to fight at a personal level and at a national level. Because the battle is real. The battle is there. But not every person God is calling to that battle. And the problem is, the internet is loaded with the plans of the enemy. Loaded with it. There are news stations and websites completely dedicated to the plans of the enemy. And I don't care what enemy it is from your perspective, because I know we all have different vantage points. We look at things and we all have different vantage points. You know, the enemy from your perspective at a global or a national, it might be the, the socialists or the globalists. You know, whatever it is, it might be, you know, from another perspective, it could be the, you know, the, the white nationalists or the Trump supporters. Whatever the enemy is, the, the internet is loaded with bad news and wants you to eat and just fit, gorge yourself on bad news constantly. And if we continue to gorge ourselves constantly on bad news. Now, I personally think that a lot of things on the internet or on the news are questionable and spurious. But let's assume it's all real. Let's assume that everything you're watching is 100% truth. Let's just assume that. What is your role in this? I got to tell you, I don't know if everybody's equipped to kind of look into the camp of the enemy and see what's going on. You know, when you're in an army, there are different 
jobs, different careers, different stations, different things you could do as a member of the army. Not everybody is special ops. I was talking to somebody last weekend who was special ops in the Air Force. That stuff can mess you up. It can mess you up. Because you're seeing the real seedy underbelly of war. And what happens behind the scenes, that's not for everybody. Special ops have special training. And they have special skills. But we all, when we gorge ourselves with things that we, all the bad news out there, do I have to remind you that Yeshua brings good news? Good news. But we gorge ourselves constantly with bad news. It doesn't mean that the battle is false. I think a lot of it's questionable, but let's just, it's all true. There's a battle out there. We know it is. We know there's a battle out there. But if you, if you look into constantly into the plans of the enemy, and you gorge yourself on it, your soul is going to get sick. And God might be saying, this is my battle. You don't need to make yourself sick over it. You have the God-given right not to fight. You can say, the people that said, you know, I got to take care of my house. I got to take care of my, my fiance. I got to take care of my garden, my vineyard. These people had bound, they knew their boundaries. That they needed to take care of something. Of themselves. God loves you enough to let you back off of a battle and take care of yourself. You don't need to stain your soul if you're not called to do that. There are many aspects of an army. Not everybody's special ops. Not everybody's artillery. Not everybody's front line. You might just be a nurse. And imagine what a holy role that is. You don't get into the battle. But if somebody's wounded, you tend to the wounds. Now, that's a good role. Or there might be no role for you. I remember this one personal story. This is going back about a decade or so. And before I was the rabbi here, Rabbi Peter Oliveira was the rabbi. And he had a prayer team. And Dawn, Dawnie, was the leader of the prayer team as she is today. I was on the prayer team. And I was working at that time at Pfizer Pharmaceuticals. Yes, that Pfizer Pharmaceuticals. Vaccine famous Pfizer Pharmaceuticals. Before they were famous for the vaccine, they were famous for Viagra. And before Viagra, it was Lipitor. So I used to work for them, and it was a dreadful job. Dreadful job. I mean, I was working 15 hours a day. I'd be here in this building on the Sabbath, and my phone was ringing, 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 ringing. Everybody wanted to be, where are you? Where are you? Emergency, emergency. We need you to, you know, it was, it was just a terrible, terrible job. And then Sundays, I was working, and it was really, really a bad experience for me as far as an employment perspective. But I was on the prayer team, and the prayer team at that time used to keep in touch with each other through text messages, like a group text message. So if there was a prayer request, it went out in a text message, and then everybody had to respond. I'm in. I'm not making fun of it. But that's how it was. You know, everybody, yes, Lord, I'm in. May the Lord arise in this, in this situation, exactly as it should be. So here I am getting pounded with texts from my job. You know, where are you? It's, I don't care if it's Saturday. I don't care if it's 3 in the morning on a Sunday. We need you online right now. And now I'm starting to get all these texts from the prayer team I finally had to go to Dawn and say, I can't do the prayer team. I just can't. It's just driving me crazy. And I felt guilty. I went to Dawn. I, I went there with this feeling of remorse, like, oh my gosh, like there's, there's something in my life. There's a, the job. My employment is getting in the way of my ministry. And I felt so awkward going to Dawn and saying, Dawn, I think I need to step away from the prayer team because I got some things to attend to. It's just not, it's not easy. You know, Yeshua's yoke is easy and his burden is light. And that's a good barometer for ministry for all of us. Is it heavier than light and easy? It may not be him. Take that one home. 
So it was heavier than light and easy, for sure. And I went to Donnie with this remorse. I said, I, I don't think I could do the prayer team. I'm just too busy at my job, and it's, 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 a, it's a burden for me. And Donnie was so full of grace. She said, well, that's so wonderful that you're telling me that. Because the prayer team, it's important to have the right people there. It's important to have the right people. Because when God assembles a team, it's got to be right. And it takes wisdom to know, is there any man who built a new house? Let him go home. Is there any man who's planted a vineyard? Is there anyone who's just working too hard at their secular job where you're not going to be able to give it the proper attention? Go home. God allows us to do this. He assembles the proper army to fight this thing. And I want to share this with you that it may not include you. And that's okay. We need to know this so much in our personal lives, especially when we're dealing with family members that need help. It's important to know that boundary, that you've gone enough, you've done enough. Now all you need to do is do nothing. Back off and let the Lord do it. The prophetic word had to come to the king uh, Jehoshaphat on this. And I have the scripture on here. You don't need to fight in this battle. I believe that many of us who are fighting battles in, in either with our personal lives and our family, our job, or at the state level, the national level, whatever it is. I believe in many cases God is saying you don't need to fight it. It doesn't mean the battle isn't real. It doesn't mean that you're scared or chicken or not in the will of God. He loves us enough to say, it's not yours. I got this. God's going to win whether, whether you're included or not. And that's a good thing to know. I'm not encouraging being a chicken. I'm encouraging being wise. You don't need to soil your soul over the battles that are over this land, the battles that are over this world. You're allowed to keep a boundary to the battles. You're allowed to. It says in Corinthians, are not all prophets... All are not prophets. Apostles, are they? All are not prophets, are they? All are not teachers, are they? All are not workers of miracles, are they? All do not have gifts of healing, do they? All do not speak in tongues, do they? All do not interpret, do they? In a body, there's many parts. Many parts. We all have our gifts. And in an army, there are many different types of jobs and assignments and formations. Find your formation. I was ministering, I remember, to this one man. He was struggling with uh, pornography for a long time. And he told me when he came out of pornography, he felt like he had wanted to do a ministry to women, porn star women, to get them out. And I'm like, no. <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> You need to stay far away from that. But Rabbi, there are ministries out there for, for, for porn stars. Yeah, good. <laughs> good, good, good. <laughs> Let it happen. Stay clear from that, my friend. That ain't yours. The battle is God's. It's not yours. Let us have wisdom to know when we're fighting a battle so much that we are affecting God ourselves. You know, I, I heard a sermon once at a conference about margins. You know how like you have a piece of paper? Remember in school, you have a piece of paper and you have the margins on the left and the right. And when you learn to write, you gotta, you can go to the margin, but not past it. So it is with our lives. God wants us to live within the margins of our lives. This is in all areas. He wants you to live a balanced life. And yes, things happen. Sometimes you have a bad assignment at your work and you got to live beyond the margins. It happens. Let it be the exception and not the rule. 
you are allowed to come back, even in ministry, within your margins. The battle is the Lord's, not yours. If it's yours, Baruch Hashem, I'll give you the pep talk, the Aragorn pep talk. You got this. Don't fear. But if it's affecting you, I can't, I, I'm telling you, I think if we, by, by looking in the plans of the enemy so often, constantly being fed, 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 the evils of the world, 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 the evils of the world. Of the world. You know, I don't think that's, well, you, know, you know, one of the, one of the uh, jobs in the army is to be reconnaissance, a spy. That takes special training to go into the enemy camp and see what's going on. It's not for everybody. Turn off the bad news and turn on the good news. Amen. So let me just speak this over you, um, not as a rabbi, but let the Lord just speak it first person through you. If there's anybody, I don't know if this ministers or even means anything to anybody here, but this was on my heart to share that God has got it. So my child, I have this battle. You fought hard. And you fought well, but I give you permission. I give you permission to back away from this fight. I am the victor. It will happen without you. I need you to rest. I need you to rest. I can't use you for other things if you're not rested. I need you to rest. The battle is mine. It's not yours. In this case, you have my permission to back off and take care of your life and do what you have to do to establish balance and boundaries and health and wholeness in your life. I got this. I'm not going to lose this fight because you're on sabbatical. I got it. I love you enough to set you free from the fight. Receive this word for me in the name of Yeshua. Amen.